Twilight Princess Link tutorial. Okay. So, I used to make Twilight Princess Link costumes for a living. And I made so many. And I'm tired of it. And everyone make another one. So I'm going to teach you how to do it. So it'll be beautiful. Okay. First thing I want to talk about is fabric picking. This is what I usually use. Which is a... It's just called green cotton twill. And it is 100% cotton. And it is on the Fashion Fabrics Club website. And I will put a thing down here for you to look at it. The important thing is, you can do linen or cotton or whatever, but the important thing is don't get a polyester blend of anything. Because polyester, when you take a picture of it, shines. Which if you're wearing a cosplay, you're going to get a lot of pictures taken of you. And if it's shiny, it's going to look cheap and stupid. And don't use broadcloth. I know broadcloth comes in a lot of colors, but the same thing about it looks cheap. Just don't do it. This is like $4 a yard, I think, on the website. And how much I usually get, I get... So this is the basic cutout back panel. You can see it. And people usually say it's about 30 to 36 inches from here to where they want it to end, which guys like it ending a little longer to cover up their stuff. Um, so I usually get about this is about a yard, but it's 60 wide, so you can get like a yard and a half for the tunic and the sleeves and then a yard for the hat, and then a little bit in case you screw up, which is good, so I usually get about four yards of this. It's great, great stuff. Okay, for the undershirt and for the pants, this is what, again, is also a twill, but this has got a little bit of spandex blended into it. So it's going to stretch because Link wears, except for in Skyward Sword, he wears like embarrassingly tight pants and tight shirt. So you're going to need some stretch to it. I have used Osnaberg before, which looks like linen. Linen will also work, but that gets a little expensive. Um, but it's really freaking cheap. And it's over by the muslin in any fabric store that you go into. But it doesn't have very much of a stretch to it, so. Eh, you know, whatever. Out. Don't poke yourself with a pin. Um, <laughs> what I got in here? Leather work. Um, leather, like his belts, he's got belts and pa pouches and the bracer things and the underarm things. Don't be afraid of working with leather. If you've never sewn before, I will teach you how to sew in later videos. If you've mowed the yard or brushed your teeth or done anything with repetitive motion you can sew. It's not it's not bad. And leather work is pretty much the same thing. People get intimidated by it I think because leather tends to be expensive and they don't want to screw it up. But let's see. For his pouches I usually start out with I'll just do this one. This little piece of leather. And usually kind of a T right here. That way it folds over and folds over. And you sew the tee up on the sides and sew this on the bottom, you've made a little pouch. But the thing about leather work is, most leather you cannot sew in your sewing machine, obviously, unless you've got a freaking nice sewing machine. And I'm jealous. But, hold on just a second, I'll show you. They make this tool that you can use with a hammer. And it, you can get them at Hobby Lobby, you can get them online. They're like... They're under 10 bucks, I don't know. But it's a hole punch. And what you do is hammer, you make holes all along the edge of the sewing. Like this, like you want to sew it. Hand sew it. You get some good, nice, thick thread from Hobby Lobby or whatever leather place you want to go to. Some people go to Tandy. I really don't because they're more expensive. Um, and just mess with it. It's easy easy to work with it, easy to sew with it. It's just intimidating looking, I think. And the other thing I think, get in there, that's intimidating about leather is there's so many ounces and weights. You go on a weather, well, no one the weather, you go on a leather website and they get all these ounces of leather, which is just thicknesses. Don't be intimidated by that. 
Um, like for your belt, you're going to want a thick leather. They say 9 ounce is like a belt leather. So you think of it this way, like 9 ounce is a belt leather. 3 ounces is like, mm, like this thin, workable. So you, you kind of get the range in there. And then what kind of leather you want to use is up to you. I know um, some people that I know that do link leather work, that do a freaking beautiful job, and I'm very envious, uh, use veg tan leather, which is leather that's easy. It's just the way it's treated. But it's easy to stamp, and it's easy to stain, so they get a nice even stain. I'm a little lazier, and uh, I go for the pre-stained leather, which, if you go to, this is the website I go to, theleatherguy.org, and he's got all sorts of colors, all sorts of colors of leather that you can just look through and just click on brown and be like, oh, that's a good, and you're going to spend about 70 to 150 a hide, I guess, because you have to buy it in the hide, um, unless they're scrap pieces. But a hide is like 26 square feet, which is like I usually get three full lengths leather work out of a hide. So, I mean, go in with a friend, buy a hide, the leather, buy it for yourself, make three sets, sell two, make your money back. Easy. Um, what? The gloves. The gloves are hard to make, so I just buy gloves and stain them and sew the fingers. Closed in them so they don't rip open. And, of course, buckles. Because he's going to buckle for here, he's going to buckle for here, you know, for his sword. What I started out doing is just keeping my eyes open at thrift stores. Because I think both of these buckles came from thrift stores. And they work great. Um, you can also order them offline. There are places you can order buckles offline. I know you can. I'm pretty sure you can off the leather guy. I know you can off Tandy and on eBay and other places. It depends on how much you want to pay for buckles and how long you've got. For chain mail, I used to knit it. Like knit like this with nylon cord with a pattern that I found online. And that works. I mean, it works for pictures, and it works for Halloween, and it works for... It looks pretty decent, and it's a sta it's a theater trick. So on stage, it looks great. But if you want to be legit, just buy a chainmail shirt. I don't know. Aluminum is the way to go, from what I've heard. That's what, just... Freaking... Freaking buy it. It's a lot easier than spending five months making a chainmail shirt. I think that's it. That's all I gotta say. That's all I gotta say for today. But then next time I will show you how to use a sewing machine. And if you are comfortable and know how to use a sewing machine, just don't watch that one. Just don't. Just don't do it. Just skip it. <laughs>